Welcome to the Front Seat Life Podcast. This is Jessica Butts, your host and CEO and creator of Front Seat Life, where I help you be unapologetically who you are in your life, love, and business. Welcome back, David. Hi. (laughs) I've got questions. I've got questions. I'm thrilled you're here. I'm thrilled you're here. So listeners, it's back by popular demand. I was just telling David, everyone I think knows the story now. You guys have been following along. It's episode 12. David was my very first boyfriend after the divorce. It was like a whole, as David likes to say, a whole situation. And we're now very dear friends. And he is so kind to come over and do this with me. And he walked in my house just now and said, don't talk to me, go in the room. I have so many questions, but all our best shit happens in the kitchen. So we're now here, we're talking and we're gonna just hit it. So just for everybody listening, Today's episode is technically going to be about masculine and feminine energy, Okay. but let's jump in because you seem to have questions. What does this mean? Well, I had first question, but now I have a new one. Okay, go. I have a new question. So here's the movie. (laughs) There's Jess, falls in love with like her high school or college sweetheart. She's married forever. Yeah. And you just made me think of something else. So when we first met. Yes. So when you got divorced and now here you go back out to dating, maybe this is a good topic as somebody who's a woman who's on the more masculine side. Who did you think you would meet when you thought, okay, this relationship and I've, it's basically been my whole life. Now I'm single. What did you think would happen? Who did you think you'd fall in love with? What, what I love that? this because everybody who listened to our past episodes always said he, they love that you turn the tides on me. Like you turn the tables and now you're asking me questions. So I will lovingly and okay. answer your question. Is this against the rules? I'm just curious. No okay. rules. No okay. rules. Um, what did you think would happen? Who did you think? I thought with? I would fall in love with you because you, and I've said this numerous times, you were the exact opposite to who I was married to. So I was married to technically, and it's a little hard to tell, but I think Brian was an ISTJ and you're an ENFP. And I told everybody when I met you, like, this is why I'm crazy about this guy because he's the exact opposite. You were fun and engaging and we had crazy intense conversations and we were just quirky and we had this energy and we were, we just bounced off of each other. And it was so refreshing for me So this is partially what we're talking about right now is the sensing and intuition, but also the the judging and perceiving, which we're going to get into this this episode, is about this masculine energy. So he had a very masculine energy, and you came in with a very feminine, softer, kind energy that was very attractive, very attractive. And you're very attracted to masculine women. Absolutely. Well, don't yes. you think everybody's kind of attracted? I think no. when we were like, you, I think when we were like living in a cave and dinosaurs were chasing us and bears were chasing us. Yes. I wonder if human beings thought, I'm really good at gathering berries. You're yes. really good at stabbing bears. Yes. yes. Let's be a team. Right? I mean, don't you think that's part of our human? I actually think that's a hundred percent true. In fact, when I took some, I don't even know what class it was. What's that kind of class? Philosophy or archaeology yeah. or some yeah, shit. Yeah. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> back in the day, this was one of the things we talked about, like cavemen and cave women. And technically, we haven't even changed that much. There is this essence of women, and you, I can see the women rolling their eyes already, but this is just like somewhat true, that women still want to have this femininity to them. And they want to trust. It, it, it's so fascinating. We want to be feminine and be able to trust a masculine man. Right. However, that's kind of what this episode is about, is I wanted to talk about this and how it relates to personality type, but, and why I wanted to have you back, because I think you're such a good example of this, is that women need to trust the men that they're with. But we are no longer cavemen and cave women. We live in 2019 right. and we have all this other shit that comes into our relationships. And so many women have become very masculine. They've become very bossy and controlling. And because of society. Dumb. Yes. I mean, they just, they, yes, the world has changed. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of men out there who don't know what 
to do with that. They don't right. know what to do. So let's back up a tiny bit because I think there's innately, there's personality types. So you're a P and I'm a J. Right. And Which was the thing we fought the most about. Yes. And you would say, I would say, we'll figure it out. Uh, Let's go somewhere. Uh, I don't know when we'll leave and we'll get there and they will stop. And you'd be like, we need to leave at two o'clock and then yep. lunch is at four. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That drove you crazy. Yeah. Which again, not my, fa- not my best quality. Except on vacation. I haven't felt like that. We yeah. We were good on vacation. Because you didn't really care what time correct. lunch was. Yeah. Correct. You look great, by the way. You just went to Hawaii? Yes. I have a question. <laughs> yes. You're in love or something. You have a- uh, wow. I am not in love. You have a glow though. What is this? What's happening? It's Maui. Are you in love? I am not. In- You're in a relationship. I am in a relationship. I am what not are you afraid in love of? yet. Oh my God. We're not going here. We are not going here. I'm curious. About I this. know, but we're on air. Uh, I am not in love. I am in a relationship. Are you intentionally of trying not to be in love? No, it's just not happening. Oh, fuck. What if he's listening? Um, Wait, is this too real? <laughs> it might be. It's a little real. Don't touch your microphone. Now I'm way more curious. I know. We'll talk about this in the kitchen when we're done. Let's, oh. Go, oh, let's go back to this, though. Okay. okay. So, uh, no. I, I, you have a glow. I, I have a glow. I am happy. I'm content. Um, I just got back from a two-week trip in Maui. That's definitely part of it. Um, What's, is he masculine or feminine? Um, A little bit of both. Well, listen. Here's the thing. Okay. This is for you. Yes. <laughs> this the, for you. What's going to be hard? Somebody who's as assertive. I don't like that word. Somebody who has masculine energy. Yes. I always think for you, the hardest part, they can't be afraid of you. Like it's somebody who's Correct. like, I'm not afraid of your bullshit. Yeah. Like you did. Blah, blah, blah. But he seemed like he, he's not afraid of your shit. Correct. That's so true. that's like, seems like hurdle one. Yeah. It's good. And so just for the listeners that are not massively interested in my personal life, which some of you might be, but David clearly is, uh, this goes back to this masculine feminine thing. So as a J woman, right. strong J woman and all you organized, yes. structured, yes. bossy, controlling. How about one more planner? There's not enough on the walls. There's a, it's a, my wall of power, yeah. David. It's my wall of power. Yeah. And it's very masculine and controlling. And yeah. so I, since we've dated, it's been five years. Um, I've learned a lot about myself. As I've mentioned before, I tattooed the word B on my arm because I realized that this controlling natural tendency so here's here's the deal <gasps> women in particular like we're like extra fucked in society because right. i think there's a tendency i know there's a tendency for j women to already be controlling we want to be in control this is how you need to load the do- dishwasher let me tell you how it is blah 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 then we're also in this society, this world, like this, you know, especially in the Seattle area of the Microsoft women, and we got to run the show, and we got to be in control, and we got to do this, and the kids got to go here, and we got to do this. So we're creating this world around us with the men that we're in relationships with that don't, that where two masculine energies cannot exist. Yeah. And so you and I in particular had an interesting dynamic with our masculine and feminine energy, because when I allowed you, and I really want the listeners to hear this, like when I allowed you in your masculine energy, it actually felt awesome. Yeah. I remember when you would kind of boss me around. You would grab me some, I mean, nicely and grab me sometimes and just be like, quit your bullshit right now. Right. And I actually, I mean, I, the women listening, I know you can feel this. Like sometimes you just want your dude to take control. It's a little caveman esque a little bit. Like yeah. I, I trusted you, but there's this sense of like, I know it's almost a martyr. Like I would become this martyr. Remember, I got to do this and I got to do this and I got to do this. And you just be like, just shut the fuck up and let me help you or just sit right. down and let me do something for you. And because you'd be like, I got up at 4 a.m. and I hiked up these stairs and here's this thing. And I'm on the podcast and the book's almost done and blah, 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 oh, blah, blah. So gross. Right. <laughs> it's so gross. And you can and now you say it back. Or women can see it in other women. And I see it in my mom. What do you think? uh, This is just for me. And just, um, it doesn't seem equitable. It doesn't seem fair. Mm. I feel like there's a sense. Say more. Well, I just, in the business I'm in, in in the cosmetic business, obviously I'm with 
98% women yeah. and who are just like you, uh, they got to work all day. And, and for some reason, they still are the ones who really are the primary care yeah. givers of the children. Yeah. And now there's this whole other element is like, Johnny's got to be on elite uh, oh, yeah. baseball. Totally. And we're hoping to get him into this school. Mm-hmm. And there's the whole process for that. And I got to keep up with Jan next door because yep. she's in Pilates class. Yeah. And I just wonder if sometimes there's a sense of, um, I'm holding, I'm holding everything up. Yep. I'm holding up. A hundred percent. And it feels like at the core of us, in our DNA, and yep. how we're wired, I mean, not to sound old fashioned or something, but I think there's a sense in us of, Climb the tower and rescue me from the castle because the dragon is attacking me. Mm-hmm. There's a part of that's real. Yeah. They didn't make a thousand stories about yeah. that for nothing. And Disney didn't make a million movies about that because it's not somehow wired in us. Yeah. And, and you're th- actually speaking the truth. And what's fascinating is I just for a minute ago almost censored myself saying that. And you're almost censoring yourself because right. we live in this society where that's not acceptable. But David, I think you're 100% right. I think we're both right in talking about this topic, about this masculine and feminine energy. Right. So not only is it innately, but you're right. Societally, this is what we have turned women into, but then there's also the masculine aspect of that men don't know their place anymore. They don't know, do I open the door or is that rude? Do I pay for dinner or does she get pissed? I mean, I went on a date, I don't know, this past summer or something, and I don't know if maybe he was just full of shit or something, but he said something like, you know, do you want to split the bill? And I thought, no, asshole, I don't want to split the bill. Like, unless you want to leave friends, But then he said something like, well, I went on a date with a woman and she was offended that I tried to pay for dinner. And I thought, this poor guy, like, he's so confused. He doesn't know what to do. Am I going to offend you if I don't offer to buy dinner? And am I going to offend you if I do offer to buy dinner? It's almost like we've tried so hard to be careful. There's no there there anymore. It's like, I think men don't know what to do and women quite don't know what to do. And no one knows quite what to say. And it's. I think everybody's a little bit on eggshells. I don't think it's a very productive for either party. And then we step into these perceived roles. So then that's the other thing that happens. (laughs) I just had one. Oh, tell me. I just had a perceived role. Yeah, yeah. Literally. Yeah. I mean, this is so uh, you're a woman who has masculine energy. I am a man who has feminine energy who's not supposed to clap in front of the microphone. (laughs) I'm I'm giving him hand signals. Don't clap into your microphone. Okay, yes. (laughs) Uh, So this just happened. I mean, literally yesterday. So all of a sudden, this alarm starts going off on the pipes downstairs. At your house? At at my house. Oh, oh. Loud noises, pipes. My girlfriend says, David, come downstairs. We must see what these pipes. (laughs) She's Russian. She's Russian. (laughs) Now, this this always happens in this situation for me. I know nothing about pipes. I know nothing about plumbing. But there's a sense, just because I'm a man, I guarantee she knows more than me about it. But she asked me to come look. So a couple things happened. One, I want to be the man. And like, I know how to fix the pipes and I'll know what's wrong. But inside, I know I don't know anything. It might as well be uh, Japanese uh, tax forms or something. It's It's like, look, I don't know anything. Here's a button. Here's a lever. What do I push? A sound is being made that I don't understand. <laughs> but at some essence of us, you know, I'm sure when she was a kid, if something was wrong, she went and got her father yeah, yeah. if something was wrong in the house. Yeah. So it's this weird part of, um, hey, have the man help this. Well, I don't know. I'm the worst person to ask to help the fix the plumbing. Yeah. But I kind of pretend, well, I'll call him and you better stop freaking. Here comes Bink. Like, I don't know what to do. So, like, But how did it actually make you feel that she did ask for your help? Even if you didn't know what to do. I'm curious. Two feelings. Yes. And this is just one. It kind of feels good. Yes. I'm val- I'm a man. Yes. And I am can protect something. Yes. Something's wrong with the house and I can protect it. So there's that sense of feeling. I don't know what the word is. Like fulfilled Strong. like i'm a man yeah uh but and then another the same moment of like embarrassment she knows obviously that i don't know anything yeah <laughs> so we kind of stare at the pipes and together uh so in one sense fulfilled and the other sense embarrassed and like oh my god and then it this has happened obviously in my life and yours and probably in other ways 
many, many times. And uh, I had this uh, another experience too. So um, I work in cosmetic stores. Yeah. And uh, in downtown Seattle or other stores, there'll be shoplifting is a whole situation in all of retail and drug abuse and theft is just kind of part of it. So they used to tell me, David, because I was a big guy and I was what, probably in the store of a hundred people, I'm one or two men in the whole store and somebody crazy would come in. So the team would come to me and say, David, go stand, just go stand over there, but don't talk. I'm like, what do you mean don't talk? Well, if you start to talk, they're going to know you're not tough. Oh, they're going to see your energy. They're going to know, but just stand. I'm, and then I'd have this feel, I'm tough. I'm I could talk. You, and they'd be like, you don't talk. Just stand there and be quiet and just be a man. Just stand there and don't say one word. But I want to talk because if I talk to him, what, what was your mom like? Yeah, right. How did this happen? <laughs> What's it feel like to sleep outside? Oh, like I. Uh, weird story. <laughs> but that's like an example of like. Um, we are who we are. We're wired in yeah. a way and there's societal yeah. norms that we still think. Yeah. I think we pretend that yep. it's not there. Yep. But they are. They are. And we have to, you know, I've got to acknowledge this at some point that. Every individual, everyone listening, you, me, we all have both masculine and feminine energy. And this is regardless of your gender as well as your sexual orientation. This right. has nothing to do with being heterosexual or homosexual. Every person right. has both masculine and feminine energy. But what this episode is about is educating us on the fact that it is tied to your personality type. So that thinking and feeling dichotomy, as well as the J and P dichotomy, have a innate factor in how we show up. But then the other thing we're talking about, was, which is this nature versus nurture, is that both things affect this. So thinking men, thinking people in general, thinking women, thinking men, have more masculine energy and then judges also have more masculine energy mm -hmm. so women that are tjs which is your girlfriend and your mom have way more masculine energy than say what you are which is in a feeling perceiver right. you're a feeling man and a kind of go with the flow so when you get matched up with your girlfriend, those are two completely opposite energies that you're right, do attract. And you've said that on opposite episodes, like I need your sharp elbows, right. mine are round, yours are sharp. That is a good match. And I, th I think just acknowledging the fact that we are born into this world with a specific personality type, which then affects our masculine and feminine energy and how we're going to show up in this world and then making a choice. So at 45 years old, single, still dating, doing the thing, like how do I want to show up knowing that this is, I would say, an edge that I have? I, I think... It serves me very well in my business, but like you've seen, you've been in a relationship with me, you know mm -hmm. that that is one of my edges. And so I think you have another element too. Oh God, what's that? Well, I, I mean, I do. I think, I think there's this other element and maybe it's a societal thing is because you're successful mm -hmm. and not just successful in what you've done, you're successful and you've done it kind of on your own. Mm -hmm. You've done it with like a dream. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of men, mm -hmm. One, mm -hmm. you're strong and powerful. You have a point of view. I think inside of many men, and you can't generalize everything. Obviously, there's exceptions to everything. But I think a lot of people feel like a lot of men inside feel like, I want to be the one who rescued you from the castle. Yeah. I want to slay the dragon and climb down the castle with you. Well, shit, you already killed the dragon. What do you need me for? There's a weird thing. Yeah. Just real talk. And talk about masculine and feminine energy. That's exactly yeah. what that is. I, I'm going to... God, I can't believe I'm going to say this right now. But, um, say it. It's way uh, yeah. more interesting. Uh, so my brother-in-law, we were actually just talking about him, Matt. Oh, I he, saw him the other day. So good. He told me this thing years ago when I was first dating because I didn't understand. Why, why, does, why do I not get hit on more? Why do I right. not? Why did more men not hit on me or whatever. Right. And he told me this theory and I cannot believe I'm about to say this on yeah, on air right now. And all the women and the men right now might be disgusted. Please don't send me hate mail. I'm just re reviewing a story. You're paraphrasing something somebody yes. else said. 
he told me about this theory that men have some men again sure. not all men some men about the wounded fawn right and that there is see you're a dude you know this i had never heard this i was like 42 years old and i had never heard the wounded fawn story right that there are men that i think in their masculine energy want the wounded fawn woman they don't want the strong cheetah that's out there. She's too hard to catch. The right. wounded fawn is sometimes the one that they want to catch. And we are derailing this conversation a tiny bit because that is absolutely 100% not what I am abdicating right well, now. And just real, I mean, real talk, just you are not a wounded fawn. No. Or I'm like not. on a safari. Uh, no. Savannah in Africa, you no. are not the zebra with the broke leg. No. Which a lot of men are a lion. Yes. And if it's the zebra with the broke leg in the back of the pack, yeah. that's the one the lion is going to yeah. get. It's not going to get the fastest zebra in the very yeah. front of the pack yeah. who's got all the muscles and can run fast. Yeah. It's okay, so let's bring this back to it being helpful because right now I'm even being triggered. So as a non-wounded fawn and as the cheetah, this pisses me off. But and, and, hey, and I'm just speaking the truth. I just wanted to bring that up because it pissed me off and it still makes me think about it. However, this is the example of, and I learned this from David Dida, uh, his, the book is called Intimate Communion. I would not recommend the book, but there's two chapters in it that are worth it just to get it for that. And it's on masculine energy and feminine energy. And he talks about this fact, and I have found this 100% to be true, and I'd love to hear your perspective on this with you and your girlfriend too, or when we were dating, yeah. is that... Two masculine energies cannot exist at the same time. So two lions together cannot always be the head lion, right? There's a head lion. I don't know what he's called, but he's called the head lion. <laughs> and there cannot be two heads of the pack. Right. And it doesn't mean, though, that it always has to be the man. It is about an awareness, understanding that if we want our partner to show up and be more masculine and take charge and take the kids and say, woman, shut up, or man, shut up, let me take charge, we, the other partner in the situation, needs to be feminine and allow that. Mm. Because two masculine energies cannot exist at the same time. And conversely, two feminine energies mm -hmm. can also not exist at the same time. That is not a productive, healthy relationship. However, most people don't even understand what we're talking about right now. But they're in the relationship where they feel it. Yeah. And so they can be like, oh my God, I get this because... My partner, whether that be, again, a man or a woman, my partner is in this masculine role. And therefore, when I come home from work or whatever, and he or she is already in this masculine role taking over, I just go sit on the couch or I go play mm. video games or I back down mm. because that person is in control. And therefore, two masculine energies cannot exist. However... I'm just going to do, it's just easier to do heterosexual. Sorry, everybody. But so when, if the woman is in that role, she's taking care of the kids, doing the stuff, being the primary caregiver, doing the grocery shop and all the stuff. And the dude walks in and the husband walks in, let's just say, and he then wants to like have some part in things. But if she's already in that masculine role, he doesn't have a choice, but to be in that feminine role. And then what the woman typically does will complain. Why don't you ever do this? Why don't you? But that's also masculine. It's not a loving response of greeting your partner with, hi, sweetheart. How are you? How I love you. How was your day? Blah, blah, blah. What's this response you're having? Oh, it's just triggering the exact moment in my life. Like I, my, when I was married, yeah. she was masculine. Yeah. And, uh, I think another thing happens when that when you keep doing that, the and again we'll just make it men and women. But I understand your point about same sex couples. But um, in my situation, a very masculine woman. Yes. There becomes a resentment. Yeah. There becomes this gross. It's not just nitpicky, but it becomes mm -hmm. irritating. That starts mm -hmm. little, and it just is irritating. The situation for me was we would go somewhere. We had kids, and we'd get in the van, and we if we went somewhere. And she'd be like, slow down, speed up. 
turn left, faster, louder, the radio, ah, uh, And after 10 years of this, I said, you just drive. Oh, you t- I remember you You just drive these. the car. Yeah. Yeah. And totally emasculating. Which seems like such thing. a small thing. Yeah. Who cares who drives the car? It was a huge thing. Yep. I don't know if maybe I shared this before. Yeah. I, sometimes I can't remember if we talked about this on the thing or yeah. in the kitchen, but. Yeah. That is something that when I think I'm shameful and I'm embarrassed and it yeah. feels. You guys should see his response. You should see his response right now. He is like having a somatic response. You're like shrinking and 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 cringing. His face is just cringing. So imagine this is your partner feeling this way right now. And my and what's happening in that situation was, well, shit. I just want to avoid the problem. You just drive, and then it does. Which is a feminine response. We don't have to argue about it. When at the time, who cares? Fine. And. If anything, it just made her more irritated. Yeah. Now I got to drive the freaking car too. Yeah. And I got to make sure we're at your mom's for Thanksgiving yep. on time. More and... masculine, more masculine, more masculine, more masculine. Yeah. And you're getting more and more and more and more feminine. Right. So again, but this is... Now I'm per- sitting in the car. Yep. The other side. Oh, I... Yeah. Oh, it's embarrassing to... Isn't it like amazing, this response? So it's interesting. And again, this is just a small example of that. But I Ugh. almost refuse... Uh, to drive my own car. So my current guy and I, uh, yeah. we typically drive my car for some reason, probably because it's just in my garage or something when he come o- comes over and visits. And we get in my car and I say, can you drive, please? Yeah. Because I feel masculine when I'm in that right? role. And so I would so much rather him drive. And there's also something I can put my hand on his neck. Right. I can do whatever. But there is this weird sense of it's a very masculine role. And this is just a small example of that. But it's big. It is big. It is big, isn't I, it? You know, some of the things I learned, and I remember after that relationship ended and we got divorced, was, shit, I will not do that again. Mm-hmm. I will not do that again. Mm-hmm. Even I, I didn't know you yet, so I didn't know if I quite recognized the... I knew who I was. I knew I didn't know how to fix the plumbing pipes. <laughs> and never will. And never will. Yeah. Uh, but then I can remember, okay, if I'm going to, this this is a dating tip, ready? Here's the dating tip yeah. for men, masculine or feminine men. Don't ask her what she wants to eat. Say, babe. Yep. Yep. There's I- something nice and I know exactly where we're going to go. 100%. Be ready at seven o'clock. Yep. You did that with me. I loved it. At seven o'clock, just be ready. Yep. And for me, that felt so good when you could, I, okay, I'll know where we're going to eat. I'll know what time. I'll know when it's parked. And um, it's a tip out there. You got your wife out there, goddamn working all more than you. She's cleaning the house and taking Johnny to goddamn select softball. P- plan the goddamn date for her. Tell her you'll pick her up at seven and wear something nice. And don't let her even think about it. Yep. And then remember, oh, that's right. She likes Thai food. Yep. Or she likes Italian and just take her there. Yep. And the wife? Shut up. Shut up and go. Yep. That's the biggest piece of this for women. Oh, I don't want Italian today. Yeah, today you do. Shit. (laughs) That every woman listening, listen to David right now, because this is a huge factor because women will say, oh, but I don't want to do that. Shut the fuck up. Because you know what happened? He won't, he won't do it again. He will not do it oh, again. Why feel, would he? Oh, he feels stupid. Yeah. I feel so dumb. Or no, why did I bother? All you do is bitch and moan and complain What's and I plan that? this day and whatever. I mean, for me, oh, I'm now I'm embarrassed. Oh. I feel stupid. I feel, oh, I feel like a fool. Ugh. I just want to avoid that. Yeah. Hello, Front Seat Lifers. I have a crazy, exciting announcement. I have been waiting to put this new work out into the world for probably seven years. It's been in me that entire time. So most of you know, I have a master's degree in clinical psychology. I used to be a couples counselor. I loved, loved, loved that work. I actually really enjoyed working with high conflict couples addiction, infidelity, as well as couples that were just doing great. Um, It was one of my favorite things actually to work with those couples who just needed a little tune up, if you will. And that is exactly what I am bringing you next. So my first book, Live Your Life from the Front Seat was released four years ago. 
and is the basis for kind of all understanding of self using personality types some therapy skills, codependency, mindset skills, learning how to put it all to good use by taking action. That is the first step in helping you be an apologetically who you are in your life. Then I released uh, two years later, Don't Do Stuff You Suck At. And that really is more for entrepreneurs and digs deep into personality type and specifically the last dichotomy of J and P to help you understand why you have trouble getting things done. And it also digs deeper into what you should not be doing, hence the name. I also introduce in that book my trademark system, the 3S method, a structure system singular focus to help you take decisive action helping you be unapologetically who you are in your business. And the last announcement, it's not gonna be a book quite yet, but I am launching my first ever online program around the love content. Drum roll, please. I literally couldn't be more excited to take this work, bring it to you in an online format. This is really gonna be for couples who are doing well. They are in a good place. They are fairly happy, need some good communication skills. And I will be honest too, this actually doesn't take an entire couple. It really could just be one person in the relationship because that makes a huge difference as well. I'm gonna teach you every single best couples tool that I've ever used. We're gonna start with all of the dichotomies, really diving into them deeper about how they are about your relationship. And stay tuned for the entire month of March as I'm gonna be diving in deep to all of these different dichotomies. We're gonna talk about masculine and feminine energy, we're going to talk about personality type. We're going to talk about mindset and love languages and communication skills and ladder of inference and family of origin and uh, core values and really all the tools that have literally have literally changed relationships, changed my relationship, changed the relationships that I've had the honor of working with. So stay tuned for more. In the meantime, the wait list is open. It is going to get filled very, very, very fast. So go to front seatlove.com. Enter your name and we will make sure that we keep you updated on all of the good stuff coming. I cannot wait uh, to work with you. Don't forget frontseatlove.com. It I'll does. tell you another situation that just happened. It's the same. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. We're on a stream yeah. of con- uh, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to share. It's a little too much. Um, <laughs> I'm sharing. You have to share. Uh, it doesn't seem big, but it was big. Um, so we're working on a project in the den together. She's doing her project. I'm doing my work project. Uh, and at the end of the project, fuck, I don't want to say this. <laughs> Um, she's like, Hey, Hey, I'm really working on my project in the future on your project. Maybe quiet down. So my message is st- don't get near it. So I was trying to make it a moment together. We're both doing a project, but the, what I hear is, Oh, stay away when you're doing that. You're loud. You're annoying. You're whatever. Is that what so, you're hearing? Yeah. So yes. oh, now, okay. Don't do that again. Yeah. We're so simple. We're so dumb. Whatever you tell us, we're just, we're just mark. Oh, that's good. That's bad. We're so stupid. <laughs> I don't know don't drive car. <laughs> you know, let her drive car. But, but like, uh, we're just taking these cues and like, yeah. what the pass to the least resistance? Yeah. What's going to get me least yeah. kind of barked at? Yeah. It's like, and this goes back to like Pavlov's dog. But it'd be like positive reinforcement versus negative reinforcement. I mean, doesn't it feel so much better to hear the positive things? Oh, honey, I loved when you did this or when I greet you at the front door or you say something sweet or whatever, but we get into these horrible negative habits of saying, I just think things that sometimes even don't even need to be said. However, I will say, and I was triggered about this just a second ago, that this is not about diminishing ourselves. This is not about feminine energy does not mean not having an opinion. It, it doesn't. Yes. I, I want to be very clear about that. I still Obviously, I'm a strong I, woman. Yeah. Like it doesn't mean, oh, I'm going to let you just decide my yeah. whole life. Like, fuck that. I mean, obviously, that's not who I am. But there is also a balance. And I think that's the biggest thing I want people to take away is one, the awareness of masculine and feminine energy. The second is how are you showing up in your masculine and feminine energy. Like I now know 
I am well aware of mine. And when do I want that to show up? And when do I want to, I call it checking your balls at the door. In my business, my masculine energy is the bomb. It's all, it's why I've gotten where I've gotten. But when I'm in a relationship with an equal partner, I don't want to railroad that person. I mean, there was plenty of times I railroaded you and I hated that. Looking back on it, I don't think I was aware of it as a, in the time, but five years later, I can think, you know, in a relationship now, like, when do I, when do I want to check that? When does it not matter? When am I contributing to the dysfunction of this relationship by being, in my gross, weird, controlling masculine energy. And then I'll go as far as to say this too, which is, you know, a, a whole nother topic is what does that say about the relationship? At what point do I not trust this person that I'm with to one, take care of themselves, but also to take care of me? Yeah. I mean, I think there's something said for when I am bossing you around that that's just, it's just disrespectful. I mean, it's basically saying like, I don't trust you. And from what you're saying, that's when you kind of shut down. Uh, yeah. I think when you and I were together, I can remember having those same feelings. But I think, I think somebody like me or whoever in the relationship, somebody's like you said, there can't be two yeah. in the same yeah. spot. So whoever yeah. in your relationship, that other person need you to be that way though too yes so don't if you're hearing it's like god i'm hearing about myself you're perfect the way you are don't change that other person needs you to be an asshole because it's hard for them to be but let's be let's get clear about that because i'm also uh, that's coming up for me right now too is that masculine energy does not mean being an asshole uh, that's right masculine energy is just it, you can be masculine and loving and respectful yes What's and you word? can be feminine and loving and respectful uh, i think the word is assertive assertive it's being drive a, yes driver a driver yeah. of the moment so the guy that i dated last the last person that i dated after the guy i'm dating now uh he we <laughs> he'll love this wait, so wait we, what was his what was his energy uh, not not very passive i would say feminine he, he was more passive. Like me. yes but more so more so we than were, me yes we were he couldn't fix any pipes no no, we were sitting on my couch one day and I think we were talking, you know, I'm such a nerd and I was talking about like, what do you, what do you theme words for your upcoming year? What do you want to create? And he was like, whatever, woo woo. So that was already not a fit, but I said, um, but he was not a dreamer, not a dreamer. He was like an accountant or, yes, or something. Yes, literally. Yeah, it was bad. Bad oh, news bears. No, no, it was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. Kind, loving, sure. wonderful, kind man, but not my dude. So. I said you this need to him. You can see the animals in clouds. A hundred percent. Yes, like correct. It. So he says to me, this was the biggest red flag ever. And I think we broke up shortly after this, actually. He says, guess what he says? He says, the one thing that I need to work on is being more assertive. Ooh, and, you don't like that. Oh, I literally in my stomach went, oh, fuck, we're done. <laughs> Did you love him? Uh, no. Okay, so I ain't gone all that way. No, But no. you... We're dating you. Were yeah, I was getting time. close, though. We were getting close. But in that moment, I went, uh-oh, because I know that I have a natural tendency to be very assertive, which is also masculine energy. And if I am with someone who doesn't care where we eat, isn't going to take charge, isn't going to throw me around in the bedroom, isn't going to do whatever the or be assertive. This is, uh, that's an issue for me because I am so masculine that I now know that I need a more masculine man to also meet me where I'm at. Do you think when you were married all those years, my sense of it, yeah. knowing you, yes. was you were not the fully developed Correct. you. Correct, 100%. So this percentage he, of masculine, we're going to call it driver energy because I like that word better. Yep. Like a driver, not as a car, but a driver of yeah. Assertive. ass assertiveness. Yep was not fully developed or not recognized. at all that's why we worked and it was also part of our demise because he took up so much oxygen in the room with his masculine energy massive you had to be massive so you weren't your true self a hundred percent do you think if he would have retreated some of that masculine energy and let you yes. be fully recognized yes you'd still be married oh uh, wow that's a big question or impossible uh, 
Uh, well, you know all the other reasons. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was, you know, 12 reasons. that That's not true. There were four reasons, and that was one of the main reasons why we're not together. So the other three were still a huge factor. But I'll be honest. I mean, the other huge factors were big, but that, in yeah. my opinion, was the main issue, is that I came into my own. I went to graduate school. I started figuring out who I was in this world. I realized, oh, my God, I have all this stuff in me that can come out, and he didn't like it. He did not like it. And this is yeah. a perfect example of when two masculine energies started to exist. There's and no it couldn't. Go. He couldn't be supportive. He couldn't. He took it as a threat. A hundred percent. It was a total threat. And so our two budding masculine energies, his never went away. He had very, you knew him. He was very masculine energy. Not just energy. He's physically. Yeah. Very muscles. And there's an energy of just. Yes. Yeah. Masculinity. Yeah. And so when I started to step into my power, I will call it, there was not a place for that. He did not like it. He was intimidated. He was whatever word yeah. you just used. So, yes. How, were you ever in love before him? Was there like a high school sweetheart? No. So he was the first love of your life? Uh, Real love. Yeah. I mean, I was 20 when I met him. So there wasn't much time. Before. Yeah. Yeah. And since then, there was me. And there's been a couple others. Mm-hmm. And have they all been my energy? No. You no. have had a masculine again. Um, I'm probably with one now. Really? Yeah, more so. He's more ma he's definitely yeah, he's more masculine. I think he's a feeler. I do think he's a feeler, but he has more masculine energy. He's got a creative energy though. Oh, he's a composer. He he's dresses kind of totally funky is, and yeah. weird and different. He's got a cool and, yeah. little yeah. I'm very attracted creative to that. Creative energy, which yeah. seems good for you. Yeah. And Brian was very, you know, the BMOC. He was the he was the jock. He was the guy. Right. And so I'm super attracted <gasps> to the opposite of that. I liked you because you were a musician and creative. And we can talk about the animals and the clouds. Right. And we can riff and do this. And then I dated Mark. I can name him. Very, 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 very opposite of me. I think I tried to make him a feeler, but he wasn't. So he was an ISTJ, which is almost my exact opposite, but I was very attracted to his J. So I've told the story that he, yeah. like, after we first started dating, he came over one day and was like, Sick of phones up or something. Oh, and I literally, like, <laughs> I was like, my panties this. are wet. Like, I am so turned on right now. Like, let's sync our calendars. This should be the least. Thing would not I was interest me at all. So turned on. I was like, oh my God, I might want to marry you. And then I got what? bored. Yeah. So, how long have you been with this one now? Uh, four months early. Just early. Yeah, early. Although you and I were madly in love in three months. I think you moved in in three months. Yeah. Yeah, we were now, hot and heavy. Are you tentative about this? I, what is the. <laughs> What's the resistance? I feel. I cannot talk about this right now. So are you too. Are, are you just. Careful about it and don't want something I, to go wrong. I don't know if he's my guy. So here's the deal. I am very clear about what I want, who I want, if I'm ever going to get married again, if I'm going to settle down. What I, if you didn't do that? What if what? What if you weren't so clear on what I want and where do I go? What if you weren't so much of He's that? a fun person to date. Maybe that's some of the solutions. Way to therapize me. No, I mean, maybe. No, I, I hear you. I hear you. This is a very P way. He's not afraid of you. No, not at all. And he's got this creative side, which I like for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. He can hear music and see things. Oh, very you much. You would love that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, but this is a, I mean, thank you for bringing this up. It's putting me on the spot, but Do you this is a good example of a masculine energy person trying to, like, figure out, is this the one? Do I do the thing? Yeah. Or do I just, but peas, you guys are so much better at this. You're so much better right. at, like, oh, let's just see where this goes. Yeah, you told me the best thing. You gave me the best advice oh. that I use this every day. Oh. I just had, I just did this. I just oh. had a meeting with my boss, and I always remember you said that the worst thing you can tell a P is, I don't, we'll figure it out as we go. I hate it. Oh, they hate it. I hate it. And I hate it with dating. Let's just figure it out. It's only been well, four months. Well, in the work world, they We just went to it. Hawaii together, and it was awesome. We had the most amazing, wonderful, perfect, great time. But yet, I'm still at this, like, I don't know. What is things. this? I don't like this. I don't like your, the brakes on it. Why don't you just let it go? <laughs> I don't understand. Because that's out of, that's very feminine. It's very out of control. Would he encourage this? Yes. 
he just loves to let you. it go. Oh, I don't think so. No. Nobody said this word yet. No. <laughs> the word has popped in people's heads. I think we're on the vacation. <laughs> there's beaches. There's sunsets. <laughs> Oh my God! We right? need to change the subject. <laughs> oh, this is the best. I'm, so, this, I'm just so interested. Uh, is he hesitant as well? I don't know. I I um, I think he's just. I think he's doing what you would do: is go with the flow. But he's also a little more guarded. So the reason we fell so fast. He's is had a heartache in his life by now. Very much. Somebody smashed very, his heart. To very. Pieces. What's his name? Recently, I can't say. Okay. Oh, he's off the get. He's off the grid. Mm-hmm. Well, now I'm more interested. I know. I he know. says, just don't he put me out there. Yeah, he doesn't love it. Yeah, so I'm respecting that boundary. Okay. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's pretty naked. You're out in the I, I, I Very, very. Huh. Yeah. But his energy is more masculine, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A bit more. Very, very creative, but more thinking than you. So the reason we fell so fast is the total NF. So... He's definitely an intuitive. So creative. Let's look at the I cloud. Like that for you. Oh, I love it. I can't be with a sensor. That's my number one criteria. Yeah. Is I cannot be with this sensor. He can see I, a beautiful piece of art. Oh, all about it. I mean, he real. creates art. He's yeah. a composer. It's I so like gorgeous. But the thinker is that they're always a little more guarded, right? They're a little more in their head. Think about your girlfriend. She's always a little more guarded, a little more in her head. You and I are just like. Fuck it. I love you. You're amazing. Let's do this. Let's right. go away in six weeks. Let's just move in together. Let's just do all this crazy shit. Right. Who cares what the consequences are? That's how we roll as feelers. And Which so, is not a good advice for life. That's not I in, some situations. in some situations, but I don't regret it. I mean, it's, yeah. I don't know. I think that's a, that's an interesting conversation to have because it's, you know, I've people have said, oh, take things slow, slow down, whatever. And then there's a part of me that's like, it's just not who I am. Like, I get that that's sound advice, yeah. but I've also lived my life as like, I'm just going two feet in. Fuck it. I just want to do what I want to do. Do you feel like, I feel, I wonder if this is something that's happening. I feel like every, like what we're talking about now, uh, I think everybody kind of knows this, but nobody st- says this. Am I In what way? I agree, but in what in what context? Uh, in the sense of um, like we're talking about relationships yeah. and uh, somebody's energy is masculine or feminine. Yeah. I feel like inertly, inertly, innately, innately. Yep. <laughs> with inertia is like when you get seasick. Right? <laughs> yes. I'm trying to sound so smart. Innately, yeah. like inside us. Yeah. We know this, but I feel like yeah. we're afraid to say it or talk about it. You, look at us. We're our, I mean, we're sitting here having a conversation about it and we're still even censoring ourselves. Yeah. So I, I agree with you. I think people don't want to talk about this. Women don't want to admit that they have masculine energy, but that's why I want to talk I don't want to sound like some Neanderthal, like misogynist, you know, like I want to fix the pipes and I want to throw you down and I want to do the, th- yeah. I mean. It does, but this is why we have to have these conversations because I I agree with you. I think most people don't want to talk about this stuff because it's a difficult conversation. It's a difficult topic to admit about yourself, to admit about society, and and I don't know, just even talk about it. Do you think it's, uh, I wonder just now, it must be exhausting. To be a woman in 29... <laughs> that seems too general. It must be tiring to, like... Yeah, I would agree. To do both sides of it. Yeah. I, I would think for 10,000 years, yeah. we split the job. Yeah. You know, we split it. You do this half, I'll do this half. I yeah. feel like and now, now... Yeah. And again, them... we're overgeneralizing. I hope there's a few men listening right now that are like, hell no, this isn't me. I do all the stuff. I think you're a good example of that. I mean, yeah. you're a good, kind, caring man who's trying to, you know, help out. But yes. I, I mean, I think there's probably every woman right now that's driving her car, driving her kids around, doing everything. Right. Uh, it's going, yes, David, correct. It is hard. And then it gets even worse. I talk to these younger kids yeah. at, at my stores. And now they don't even date. They don't even, they, they, they slip, the, oh, they I slide can't. the phone yeah. left or right. So they didn't really. Yeah. So and they don't know that they don't understand this about themselves. We're not having these kinds of conversations. So, yeah, I think it is hard. Um, but this is kind of what we're talking about is like society 
Um, I just did a talk yesterday, a keynote at Microsoft, and there's all these high power, badass executive women. And I'm looking around the room and I start mm. and I start talking about this. And I mean, I gave a great presentation, but the one part where I got all the head nods was when I got to this part. And I was talking about the controlling energy. Oh, could you imagine? 90% of the women in that room admitted to either being J personality type or having masculine energy. I right. told the funny example about, you know, the dishwasher thing and the whole room just started cracking up because all those women were like, oh my God, that's me. I'm totally controlling. I'm telling my man what to do because they go to Microsoft, they go to wherever they're working, they're doing the thing, they're raising the kids, they're, you know, they're contributing. But it also then becomes this almost a false belief or a false role that yeah. we take on. We step in, you know, in graduate school, this is one of the best things that I ever learned is that even if it's not a spoken role or rule in a family, it's unspoken. Right. And couples get into unspoken roles. And so these women come, they go to these super executive jobs. They used right. to stay home and wear dresses for fuck's sake. Like who does their hair and wears, right? <laughs> you, watch Ma heels, you watch you? Mad Men and you're like, who fucking wears that? I'm wearing sweats and Uggs right, right. right now. Like no one's doing that. But back in the day, that's what you did. Now we're going to work, we're doing the bossy stuff, we're doing all the stuff, we're doing the, and we're supposed to then come home and like check our balls at the door and yeah. then have this different power dynamic at, at home. And so there's just a lot of confusion about confusion. this masculine and feminine energy. It's confusing for women Don't and it's also it's... confusing for men. And we've, I think in society, we've tried to demasculine men and, oh, and totally. evaluate the masculinity of women. Yep. For whatever reason. I'm yep. not smart enough to know why. But I, I, Because I just think it's part of, it's just like, a, it's somewhat of a systemic issue. But I think it, as women are going into the workforce and doing more around that, that's somewhat happening. Yeah. We're just, I don't know. But like if, we, if you and I were strangers and we were in this room and all of a sudden, and we didn't know each other, a baby crawled in. Mm. I would hand the baby to you. Now it doesn't mean... You're better with babies than I am. Not, that's probably not. not. I, I probably don't have any babies. You have two of them. <laughs> but if we didn't know each other, yes. for whatever funny? reason, yeah. we'd probably give the... And if you and I were strangers and the alarm for your pipes went off, I would you'd say, you. David, let's go yeah. fix the pipes. Yeah. That doesn't mean I know how to fix pipes yeah. better. Yep. Yeah. But this is, goes back to that caveman example. I will never forget this instructor. So again, I can't remember what the class was, but it was at like some community college. I was like 19 years old. And he had us do this. He called it Mrs. Caveman, whatever the year was, 1995, and Mrs. Caveman, 1995. And we had to describe what that person's characteristics would be back then. And what they are now. Interesting. And it was the same wow. shit. Like birthing hips, big boobs, caring, nurturing, loving, respectful, submissive. It was, I mean, I was only 19 years old. And I just remember being like, this is mind blowing. And the man's was Provider. strong, able to provide, right. uh, confident, well-spoken, a leader. But the woman wasn't a leader. Right. She was submissive. And the dude's caveman thing was a leader. Yet, look at the women today. Like, how confusing is this? And yet, we're 2,000 years from that. But technically, I mean, his, you know, this instructor's example was technically we're not that far from being that way. No. But yet, we live in a completely different world. And I don't think we're doing either side any favors. I, yeah. I think, I mean, I don't, I don't have any studies in front of me, but I believe... Uh, 60 plus percent of college graduates are women now. So we, yeah. so we have men who aren't being as successful in education yeah. and yeah. ultimately whatever that leads to. Yeah. So yeah. we have men are lost. Yeah. They don't know what to do. Yeah. They don't know the yeah. rules. Yeah. They don't know what to say, what to open the door, pay, split the bill. Women don't know what to do. So we're doing this dance when yeah. nobody knows yeah. what music is on. And really all it is, and I think this is probably a good place to wrap this up, is that 
all this is is just education. It's uh, for fuck's sake. Obviously, I am not about diminishing strong women. Like that's the and no that's way the, the anti God. of what I'm about. Right. I'm all about strong girls, strong women doing your thing. But it's not about masculine energy being strong or feminine energy not being strong. It's just two different energies that exist within the same person. So I is a very I would say strong, assertive, aggressive, powerful woman. I can also tap in right. to my feminine energy when I choose to do so. Well, don't you feel like when you and I were together, yeah. I felt like the times, and we kind of joked about yeah. the rougher times, but the times yeah. when it was the best 100%. was when those roles were malleable yep. and they switched. Yep. And yep. we didn't talk about it, but yep. in this situation, I took the masculine energy. Yep. And in this other situation, you did. Yep. And we're going to play off. Yep who's better at this situation and who's better. And I think the most successful relationships. Yep. Yep. It's not in stone. It's yep. in, okay. In this moment, who's taking that energy? Cause you can't have both at the same time. And the perfect place to end this is that takes trust. Mm, it takes right. mutual respect. I'm just thinking of you and your girlfriend now, kind of that ebb and flow of going back and forth of knowing when each person can take on each role, takes trust yeah. and takes respect. I even think about it when we were in Hawaii, um, my guy and I, there uh, he typically takes on a, a, a more assertive, aggressive role. And when we were in Hawaii, he got sunburnt super, super bad. And he's admitted he was with a very, very strong almost mean woman before me. And so he has a hard time asking for help. And he got crazy sunburned. And we came home from dinner and he just was like, I need your help. Like, I need you to rub Which is hard al- to say. Yeah. And I need you to rub aloe all over me. And I just went into this, like, it felt so feminine. Nurturing. and Yes. It giving. felt so good mm. to be able to go into that. And he was so in his feminine, kind of allowing himself to receive that and then two yeah. days later i was the idiot and i got sunburnt and we like switched those roles right and it was a respect it was a trust right. it was not being defensive it was not trying to control anything it's just being able to go into those two opposite roles of of, of he's not judging me i'm not judging him it, it was just a, it was really um i remember in those moments feeling like Oh, this feels really good and feminine and nurturing and kind and, and healthy. And, yeah, yeah. You're and still you, and you still have yeah. what you have. You're yeah. not. I think sometimes we think we're giving something away. Right. We're giving something away. You're not. You're not giving any from both whatever side of it you're on. That's a really powerful point. You're not giving it away. Yeah. You're actually. Do you th- I would. Gaining. I would think women feel that way. So I, I think this is a. Uh, an educational point is is the book from David Dida is very sexual in nature. So he comes at masculine and feminine energy from a very sexual perspective of that men give and women receive. And so for women to be in their feminine, but I would say, I, I, I shouldn't even say that. I think any gender to be in your feminine means to receive, Right. And so if you think of sexually in nature, women literally receive a man. And again, sure. we're talking about heterosexual relationships here, but homosexual relationships are the same. Whenever you're in that feminine role, you are receiving. And that takes trust. Mm-hmm. It takes a sense of, I trust you right now to rub aloe all over me or to be kind to me or to nurture me. All of that takes a level of being able to receive something. And there's a lot of, I'm going to, you know, make a bit of a speculation, but I think there's a lot of women right now that get in their heads that they can't trust their partner, but probably mostly it's because they haven't let them. Mm -hmm. They haven't allowed them in. They don't get soft enough. Something you just said really triggered that for me. They don't get soft enough to allow that to happen. They just get in this busy, bossy, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm taking the kids here. I'm going here. I'm going to do this. 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 And then it comes to, you know, being able to be soft and there's like no space for that. Right. And I think to be fair on the men's side, like let's just talk about you and I. 
I didn't like it when it got pushed so far where I had to say, knock it off. Yeah. Stop doing this. Mm-hmm. I didn't like to do that. I didn't mm-hmm. want, but I think for people, and I won't say men or women, but uh, the feminine person in that role, yeah. you got to step up too. You know, we're, we're kind of bashing on really masculine women, kind of, in a way. Yeah. And I don't want it to sound like that. Yeah. The other side is, got, is, is equally responsible. That's a great freaking point, David. They That's took, a great point. They were so passive, yeah. so received so much, they've left, there's no oxygen in the room, so they've taken it. Yeah. So that guy, if she's that way, he has to get out of his comfort. She has to get out of her comfort. But she does too. And, and it, it, this is a, such a good point because this happened in our relationship. You, uh, you would get pushed to the point of where you would... Li- I mean, I will never forget the time we were in our bathroom and you pushed me uh, again. Uh, this don't sounds, give me a rest. I know, I know. This sounds terrible. You lovingly... I don't need an R. Kelly moment. You right? lovingly <laughs> somewhat pushed me up against the wall and just yes. said knock it off and you looked at me and you just you took this masculine role and in those moments I melted because I was like okay oh my god I don't have to do this like I am being ridiculous I am creating this right now and I don't need to be doing this and I will say and I think you're speaking to the men that can be uncomfortable right. for them too, but oftentimes we want it. Right. Even though we act like we don't, we're so resistant to it, right? But when you step up and do it, it feels amazing. And so I think you're heeding good advice to the men. So the, the female perspective is girls, women, we have to let them do that. We have to let them, and for the men, or again, I, I hate that we're c- continuing mm-hmm. to, to do heterosexual, but whatever, uh, of the, the 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 masculine in the relationship, he's also, like you're saying, got to change things up a little bit yeah. and got to step up and say, I don't want to do this anymore. Shut up. Or, I mean, you can do it in a nicer way of just being, I need to be heard right now. I need you to hear me. We need to go to therapy. We need to talk about this. We need to... To take a course. We need to do something. Like I'm fed up because I think that's what a lot of men do is they just shut up and give up. Yeah, I think it happens every day. I'm just thinking of like when your our relationship ended. You know, thinking about it now is maybe I should have fought more. I, mean, I just gave up. Okay, it's over. Right. Like you know, this is it's been run over. But um, I I I thought that. I mean, I remember where I was when that happened. I was on the dock with my sister, and I think I said out loud to her, well, I guess he's giving up. Yeah, and I probably thought, well, you know, it's hard. It's hard to go against what you are, and it takes, (laughs) you know, for both parties, for both people in those things, and it's like... And and this takes, uh, you know, there's a lot of people listening that I'm sure are single and this is helpful, but there's also a lot of people listening that are married yeah. and need to have this conversation. If you and I were married at the time, we would have had a different conversation. We would have sure. gone to therapy. We would have figured this out. But you yes. have to decide, like, is it is it worth fighting for? And if you're married, I certainly hope the answer is is yes. Fight for it. Yeah. you got to yeah, figure it out. That grass is not greener. Yeah. You think it's going to be so fun? And you didn't date? You dated... Your husband or your other people in the year 1997, it's like on Mars now. <laughs> Stay married. <laughs> get a book. Get a counselor. Get a, get a, get a, no, take my <laughs> online course. I'll teach you all kinds of shit. We're Obviously, if something's this. really terrible happening, yes. do what's best yes. for your safety. Yes. But, but if, that's, it, it if is, it's annoyance yeah. and you're mad because you're going to tell them. You can educate yourself on this. This is why we're doing this. This is why I have this Don't new get online course. This is why I'm. we're having these podcast episodes. Because this is educationable. Like, there's a lot of things in a relationship that are not. And yeah. then there's a lot of things. You can just learn how to communicate. You can learn about masculine and feminine energy. You can, like, make your spouse listen to this right now. Like, there's right. so many things that you can do to educate yourself. Don't get divorced. Ah! I'm not advocating for that. I can't. I I I was the worst couples therapist because people would be like, "How do you feel about divorce?" I'm like, "I think it's essential. It's times." I mean, I'd have people come in and be like, "You guys need to not be married." I mean, clearly, I would never say there's times that. where a divorce should happen. I don't get me wrong, but you you're divorced. So fight it. Fight for it. I agree. Yeah. Educate yourself. I I mean, I always say. Feel like you have done everything that you can possibly do. Right. I I I can. 
honestly say I did, and I feel fine leaving. You. Yeah. But whoever you think you're gonna, you think something's better. Who's the Who's the Aquaman everybody loves? The guy with the big muscles. Oh God, Jason, somebody middle. Okay. Of whatever. So you think you're getting oh. divorced and you're gonna fall in love with him, and you think it's gonna be great. You'd be with him two weeks and you'd be like, Jason, more push-ups? We're going to do push-ups again? <laughs> more push-ups. Great. Love it. Oh, yes. my. No matter who it is, nobody's Someone's perfect. Someone's going to... Nobody's perfect. That's a thousand percent true. We're not perfect. No. So, I mean, I've always said that. Being in a relationship with me, like, whoo, that's got to be challenging. More push-ups, huh? Great. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, great. You're not going <laughs> to eat carbs. That's fucking great. I would like to eat some pizza <laughs> right. right now. That's great. All right, David. Thanks, bro. Okay, man. We're having a let's do it again. I think this needs to be heard. I let's agree. help people. All right. I think this let's might just be a monthly thing. Okay, you want to come over monthly? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's let's help people. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you next week. I think next week I'm talking about the ladder of inference. In fact, what's that mean? That would be a good one. You remember when you used to tell me I'm an A plus ladder climber? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're going to talk about next week. So I'm going to educate oh. them on this ladder of how we make assumptions and we draw conclusions and Ooh, like, like we that. make up all these stories in our head and instead of not just checking it out. Ooh, that sounds like a good one. That's gonna make it work. All right, everybody, I have a confession to make. I have a new obsession, and that obsession is reading your ridiculously wonderful, loving, amazing reviews on iTunes. I love them. None of this even matters without all of you. So as a thank you, each week I will be reading one review on air and calling out your review with your name or your iTunes handle. So here's how it's going to go. You're going to go to Instagram and follow me at Front Seat Life. When you hear your name called out on the podcast, you are going to send me a DM with your address and say, oh my gosh, you just read my review. And I or my team will be sending you some Front Seat Life swag. We've got books and we've got tank tops and we've got journals and we have these adorable pink swells. So we will be choosing from the goodie bag and sending it out as a thank you. So thank you, thank you, thank you in advance. And I am so deeply honored to have the opportunity to thank you back. Today's review comes from, which I love this name is hilarious. Uh, their username on iTunes is computer, not so literate. So if that's you, DM me. Uh, thank you for the review. And you write, yes, exclamation, five stars. Thank you so much. She writes, or he writes, just listen to the first episode and so many great gems. No matter what your age is, where you are in life, and your train of thought, there are so many takeaways. Looking forward to continuing to listen to Jessica's fabulous thoughts on life and tips to get into action. Thank you so, so much for that gorgeous review. From the bottom of my heart, truly, thank you so much for listening. I know that you have a ton of options. And the fact that you are taking time to listen to the Front Seat Life podcast means absolutely everything to me. If you're interested in learning more about the Front Seat Life way of life in the community, there's a couple ways that you can do that. First is always starting with your personality assessment tool. It's available on my website at jessicabutts.com. It's totally free and it will help you figure out your personality type so you'll have some idea of what we're talking about. Next is if you're interested in hiring me for a keynote or some coaching or or strategy days, or the fabulous and amazing Front Seat Life community. You can find out all about all of that at jessicabutts.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time.